In this episode, we clean the car inside and out, double down on trying to find the misfire, and somehow end up with the car in worse position. This thing is going through it right now. What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode three. Is this episode three? Is this episode three? Nobody's here. It's just me. Um, I think this is episode three of the Mercedes 190 Project W201, aka Ron Burgundy. <laughs> we got parts on the way. While the parts are, you know, on the way and we're kind of waiting for them, I'm actually going to try to clean this thing up today. But there is a couple things I want to do before I start cleaning it. One of the things on the last episode was it had a misfire on cylinder one. Even though cylinder number two actually had a cross threaded spark plug hole, it actually still fired. It was actually cylinder one that did not fire. So today I'm actually going to take that fuel injector out because it seems like it's on the fuel side and maybe if there's anything that's super obvious we have new injectors on the way anyways but i just want to see if there's anything super obvious that stands out as to why injector one, number one is not firing and also that seat it sits way too far back i'm going to remove the seat so we can clean the interior anyways but after removing the seat i want to see if there's something going on as to why that seat sits so far back uh, versus the passenger seat because I can drive it, but I'm six feet tall. Sam cannot drive it because it's too far back. So I'm gonna try to figure that out too. But um, without further ado, let's uh, pop the hood and get back onto this thing. All right, give it a little pull. Boom. And then because we fixed the ghetto cable, we can now pull this up and this at the same time. And it's super easy to pop the hood. So it looks like we're gonna have to pop this intake box off. Again, it's no big deal. It's just a 10 right here and a 10 right there. There's supposed to be a third 10 right here, but as you see, it's not there. Um, it looks like the grommet that's supposed to hold the thing is kind of, I don't know what's going on there. So I don't know if that part comes off or it's part of the valve cover that's broken. This valve cover is cracked in places. So a new valve cover might be kind of cool, but that'd be more for looks, not necessarily for performance. You don't absolutely need a new valve cover, but let's go ahead and get this box off. The injector one is right there. All right, so to remove the fuel injectors here, it seems like, first of all, they're hard lines. The fuel lines are hard lines. So it looks like you have to take that off from that, which is gonna be two wrenches. And then there's a fuel injector holder that actually holds two of them in place at the same time. So it looks like I'm about to take out two lines and then it has another one in the back for three and four. And probably got to move this thing out of the way too, which I think is just a Phillips right here. So should be pretty easy. Oh, yeah, slides off super easy, cool. So this is a 13 and this is a 14. So I'm about to hold this tight with a 13 and then loosen that with a 14. Kind of nervous, I do not want to break that. Okay, cool. Came loose. And let me do this one too because again it has a bracket so it looks like both of them have to come out at the same time and mine is dry perfect now i gotta get this bracket which i'm not sure it looks like a 13. of course i drop it why would i not drop it where did it go i think it hit the ground but the ground is grass Needle in a haystack. Okay, got the bracket out. Now, the injector. All right, so it's definitely black. It's black. <laughs> uh, but I was trying to see if there's anything distinctly that says, hey, this doesn't work. And I don't see anything crazy. Let's see what number two looks like since we're already got everything disconnected. And yeah, it looks basically the same, but a little bit cleaner. So this is, so it's really hard to get the camera to focus on these things. This is um, cylinder number two that works, and this is cylinder number one that doesn't. Um, I can actually see that this actually has like a little bit of lubricant around it, like fuel. And this one is bone dry, which looks like this hasn't fired in a while. <laughs> so this definitely, this injector is definitely not working. And also if you look at the edges of it, Again, see if I catch it on camera. It looks like it's kind of damaged. It looks like it's kind of dented on the inside of it. It's kind of weird. All right, so I just got the injector soaking in some brake cleaner right now. See if maybe it'll free up some of that rust will kind of dissolve and maybe it'll work. You know, it's it's worth a shot. It costs 
pretty much nothing. So we're just gonna let this sit for a while. And while that's doing that, we're gonna go ahead and try to work on this seat, see what's going on there. It was one bolt holding the seat in. <laughs> okay, it had bugs, cause um, there's a little ant trap. That's nasty. Funny story, Ebony, my precious E36 that I've had since 2010, I recently found out I'm actually the second owner of that car. I had no idea. I bought it, modded it, modded it, modded it. It's where she is today. And I just found out I'm the second owner of that car. And I remember when I pulled the seats out to swap from the original seats, I found a credit card in there that expired 1995, which tells me that must have been the original owners of the car because it's a 1994. So they probably lost their card in the seat somewhere in the abyss of the seat, never found it. And it just rolled with me until I changed those seats in like 2014 or something like that. So it's pretty insane. So I still have that card somewhere in the toolbox. One of these days, I might try to reach out and find them and say, hey, did you buy a 1994 325 IS? If they did, I'd be like, I got something to show you. <laughs> so that'd be a funny story if I can find them. But um, let's pull these seats out. Maybe we'll find some gold in here too. So there is another bracket that's down here. So I can take that bolt out, which looks like a 10. It's hard to see because it's dark. Luckily I didn't break it, but I didn't expect a harness to be on it. Everything's manual, but I guess it's probably for the seat belt. Is that grass? Bro, what the hell? I don't think it's grass. I think it's part of the seat. It's probably, I don't know, some 1980s couch stuff, I'm sure, going on in there. This is filthy. This doesn't do anything, <laughs> not anymore. I think it's supposed to be there. And um, yeah, cigarettes, smoker. But uh, yeah, nothing we can't clean up. It's actually not as bad as I thought it would be, but there are a lot of random bolts. Well, I guess they're seat bolts because the seat wasn't bolted in. So make sure I get all my seat bolts here. And uh, so it looks like there's three seat bolts oh no four i guess one has to go here and then the one that goes into the tunnel so physically i don't see anything wrong with this thing everything looks like it's working as it's supposed to here's the bracket seats upside down so you would pull this thing up and when you pull that up it pulls on this lever that releases this little handle on both sides and it allows the thing to move back and forth if necessary. Um, I'm trying to do it by hand. It's really tough to move it even by hand. That's all the way, that's all the way forward. Okay. So it works, it's just a little rusty. So I'm gonna try to find some spray. I'm sure there's some at the shop and uh, get a little spritz in there and then maybe it'll slide a lot easier. All right, I'm gonna spray shouty down with a little bit of that lithium. You know what I'm saying? Actually, this is not lithium. I thought it was lithium grease. Same colors, multi-purpose lubricant. So I think right here in the balls. <laughs> Let's get serious, guys. It's not funny. In the balls. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have to spray the balls. The balls isn't the part that's moving the seat. <laughs> <laughs> it's this part. I gotta spray it in there. That'll work. Alright, so the seat is fixed. Didn't really need fixing. I just needed a little bit of grease. But good to know that the seat actually does work and nothing's weird about it. So I'm not gonna pull the other seat out. Yes, I am because I have to clean under it. So let's pull the other seat out. Hopefully, it's held on by more than one bolt or not. So it'll make my job easier. All right, so this one actually does have all his bolts in, and I even have to take this thing off, which covers the bolts, so it's definitely, there's glass here. That's not a good thing. Um, we'll see what's going on, but uh, one problem, this door doesn't open. So it's gonna be kinda hard to get the back bolts because I can't open the door. I wonder if it opens from the inside. Where the hell is the door handle? I guess it's one of these. Oh, wait, this might actually work. Yes. 
It's like an escape room. Oh my God. This seat might not be coming out. <laughs> um, That is really rusted. I don't know if that's gonna move, but I guess we'll try it. Nothing else to lose. Is that one, that one's not as bad. That's really bad. We got options. It's just a cloud of rust. Why didn't I just move the seat up so I can get more room? Because I'm stupid. I shouldn't have did that. Because it looks 10 times worse now. <laughs> ah! Bruh, what is this? What is that? What's that? What's that, brother? <clears throat> nope, that just stripped. Okay, that's what I thought would happen. Yeah, this, this seat is not coming out today or ever at this point. <laughs> At least the seat's in good condition. Uh, there's no rips. It could be cleaned, I'm sure. And um, it does move back and forth. So we won't have to remove it anytime soon unless we go aftermarket seats, but time will tell. I still want to know the story behind this glass. It's under the seat. And it's definitely a car window. Yep, that's exactly what happened. It's probably hard to see on camera, but right behind my finger, you can see a Mercedes logo. Um, and the rest of the windows have Mercedes logos too. And this one actually says PPG, which is probably some aftermarket company that installed a new window. So we solved the case. Wasn't that hard, but we solved it. Well, that's it. That's all we found was just some glass, some rust, and some ants. I was hoping to find some really cool story under these seats. Um, maybe like an old gun from like 1962 or something that would like be used to solve a murder or something and it was just hiding in the car the whole time and the owner never took it out but no we didn't find anything like that so i'm just gonna clean it up and um go grab a shop vac get it cleaned up and uh then we'll go clean up the outside also and put the injector back in and see if it actually works now Well, it ain't much, but it's honest work. Um, it does look much cleaner in here. Probably hard to tell because it's still stained up like crazy. Um, but it is actually cleaned up in here. And I can remove the back seat. I guess you pull this thing up. I don't know what's under there. So let's find out what's under there. Maybe we'll find some gold in there. I'm gonna put this back here. Hopefully I don't scratch the paint. That was a joke. Obvious joke, right? Obvious. What's behind door number three? Nothing. So boring, man. Mo money, mo money, mo money. What is this thing? I'm not gonna mess with it, but I'm just curious. Anyways, there's some more money right here. I'm getting to it, boy. Come on, man. Who said there's no money in detailing cars? Ooh, is that a dime? That's a dime. That's two dimes. Ooh. Something else hidden under here too. I don't know what that is either. So much to learn about these cars. This one's covered, that one's not. Come on, man. Come on, man, it's too easy, bro. The thing I love about old cars is they're so easy to work on. I don't know what these two things are in the back seat, but if you need to change them, you can get there in five seconds. So <laughs> it's really cool, whatever they are. I have to look them up, or maybe some of you guys know. There's some E90 people here now. That uh, what is going on? What are these things in the back seat? And do I ever need to change them? All right, got this thing vacuumed out as best as I can, especially on this side because I can't, you know, move the seat. But I did get as much as I can. It looks much better. It somewhat looks clean. So. uh yeah, I think the inside is done. I'm gonna go ahead and put the seat back. Um, initially, when I took the seats out, I planned on also doing like shampooing on the carpet and stuff, trying to clean it up a little bit. But the smell that was like in the first episode, where it kind of smelled like a couch, 
has gone away doesn't really smell like that anymore at least i don't notice it maybe i got used to it but i think just moving the car around stuff like that has kind of let it air out or whatever the situation may be but um i'm just gonna save that because i know eventually this thing's gonna get professionally detailed by a professional and they're gonna do the same thing anyway so no sense of doing it twice and uh truth is my back hurts so these have been soaking the entire time i don't know if there's gonna be any difference here I don't even remember which one is which. Maybe I should have marked them, but one works, one doesn't. <laughs> so whatever follows, we'll find out. I remember now, one is a little bit damaged. So we're going to put that back in one. It does look like it cleaned up, though, around the edges. It might actually work. So this may work, this may not work. Uh, we have new injectors on the way anyways, but I kind of wanted to experiment and see how this car, you know, works. And... Um, as you see, it's actually kind of easy. So um, next time when we get all four injectors, we'll do all four. I'll probably just have to remove this hose back here and pretty much do the same process. So it looks like it's equally as easy on the other side. So that's not bad. So that's kind of cool. So let's put this thing back, the bracket. It covers that. And then there's going to be a 13 that holds the bracket in. And then we'll screw the injector lines on. All right, we got two problems. One, they just started cutting grass over here, so it's mad loud. <laughs> and then two, remember that 13 I dropped in the engine bay that went on the grass that I can't find? Well, I still can't find it. So I'm gonna have to push the car back and see if I can find it that way. Cause I've reached under there and I cannot find it. I'm thinking it didn't hit the ground. It might actually still be in the engine bay cause it should be right here. I just went in the shop and grabbed another 13. I was really wasting my time looking for that. All right, let's fire this thing up and see if we magically have four good working cylinders. All right, make sure it's out of gear. Oh, this shifter needs to be looked at too. It goes up and down fine, but left and right is really hard. So it's kind of weird. So I'm gonna figure out what's going on there one day. Well, let's try to start this thing up. I'm assuming it doesn't have a clutch switch because it's 1987. She runs worse than before. <laughs> That's not doing anything. Oh, it is doing something now. This thing is going through it right now. Is there a vacuum leak, maybe? Let me figure out what's going on. I do see something wrong, but I'm not sure if it's related. But this is definitely broke off. <laughs> This is some type of sensor. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Um, but clearly it's not reading anything. So I wonder if that has something to do with it. Or has that thing been... I mean, I just broke the other side completely now. So I would have to rewire that if anything happens. I'm going to start it again. Um, now that both of them are unwired. Just to see. I'm testing, doing trial and error right now. So... Things I'm doing probably don't make sense, but I got to see something. I'm wondering, I don't know what kind of sensor that is. I got to look that up. Let me find out what sensor that is, if I can. Okay, so it appears to be the coolant temp sensor. Looking pretty similar. Colors are a little bit slightly different. There's another sensor here, but I think that's for the auxiliary fan which that makes sense um but so if that is a coolant temp sensor like this is saying it is and it also says it's for 190e then that is definitely the problem because without the coolant temperature sensor it doesn't know what the temperature of the car is so cold start will be kind of weird so i am going to try something ghetto give me a minute because the sensor sensor is probably fine 
but if there's no wires to it, it's probably not fun. I'm gonna start it and I'm gonna put those, I'm gonna connect those two wires to the sensor and see if it does anything. Hopefully I don't get shocked. If it does, it'd be really cool. That's exactly what's going on. It's the coolant temp sensor not reading. So it doesn't know what the temperature of the car is. So it doesn't know the cold start, hot start. So now that I'm holding it in the position, it's idling. And it sounds pretty smooth. So we might have one injector, but I can't move to find out. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try to put this down and see if I can pull. Oh, I moved the wire. Nope, it's on my nose now. I'm gonna try to put this down and see if I can um, pull injector wire number one. See if there's a difference. There is. Yep. So that's it. A little bit of, um, yeah, just injector. So we have four cylinders. Cool. So we fixed the problem and solved the problem. <laughs> the beauty of working on cars. Uh, so the situation now is we do have four cylinders by cleaning up that injector All we did is just soak it in some uh, brake cleaner I don't know for a couple hours at this point because I was cleaning in you know the old sides while that thing was just like over there soaking in a can so that Did clean the injector so it actually does work. So when I pulled injector one It did make a difference in um, how it was idling and before it didn't do that at all So it's definitely cylinder number one. So now we know cylinder one works so that's pretty cool so um as far as how we're going to fix this i do not know because this needs to be i guess depend and re-soldered into this harness so um yeah that's pretty i'm not exactly sure how that's going to work because i don't know how you would pull this i don't even know how you would pull this out it doesn't look like it hammers through. Maybe it does. I'm probably going to take these two pieces home. Uh, there's not a lot of these cars hanging around. Maybe if I can find one in a junkyard or something, I would actually just take that harness with these two plugs and just chop it off and just um, reattach them here. That would be easiest, but I think I'm going to do this the hard way. So I'm going to put these in my pocket and take these home and see if I can kind of figure out how to extend those. So we fixed the problem. And broke it so anyway it's just gonna lay this up there no point in actually bolting it down right now so sorry Sam your car is worse <laughs> all right guys everything is bolted back in we have four bolts five with the one that actually goes into the firewall so this thing is completely mounted as it should be so it's awesome and The seat moves. <laughs> so I'm really far away right now, as you can see compared to the other seat. And now I'm all the way up. So this is really close, but Sam should be able to drive now. Also, I haven't tried it yet, but I had an idea, very temporary, just to see. I stripped the two wires and just stuff them down into the sensor. So maybe <laughs> it will connect and they will actually work. So I'm again, I'm gonna start this car up. Oh, buttery smooth, buttery smooth. There we go. Look at that, no wobbling. Very good. All right, I put the box back on it, but I did the same thing as I did before, and I hit the sensor. <laughs> so it's, um, oh God. So it's like falling out, but yeah. At least I know that is the problem, but it should be drivable. So I'm gonna see if I can drive it. All right, on our usual journey. Oh, it's so much smoother. 
it's so much smoother. Oh, we got four cylinders. The misfire is done. Sweet. Injector's already on the way, so we're gonna throw new ones in there anyways, but that's pretty sweet. I think there's some fuel injector cleaner in here, and you know, I think we're good. This thing cruises. This, this is, man, 1986. This thing is a trooper. That's so awesome. <laughs> Suspension. Oh, I'm not in here. Yeah, I need to fix that. That's weird. I don't like the shifter. <laughs> this thing's so slow. <laughs> Alright, about to give this thing its first bath. I'm not gonna go too crazy because obviously it's not gonna make much of a difference. There's no clear coat on it. But it should at least get some of the dirt and crust off it that will do more than what rain will do. So I'm gonna try to spray it down, wipe it down, and see how clean we can try to get this thing. I'm again not expecting amazing results, but better than nothing. And it only looks as good because it's wet. Because once it dries, it's gonna look crusty again. But man, look at this thing wet. Or well, Ron Burgundy looking clean. Go ahead, Ron. Let's see you. Damn, that looks good. Ooh. But as soon as it dries, it's gonna look bad. Look at the trunk, wet. Ooh. As soon as it dries, it's gonna look like that again. <laughs> it's gonna look the same. I did get a lot of the dirt off, I could already tell before it even dries. But, damn. Mm. I ain't gonna lie, bro. This color slapping, bro. I don't know if we can get this thing re cleared. There might be enough paint on it. That they can sand and just re clear it. And it look like it's wet again. I don't know. I have to talk to some painters. I don't know. We'll see what the options are, but that is an option. I do like Ron Burgundy. This color is pretty fire. And especially when other stuff starts happening and makes it look cleaner. Yeah, this is, um, yeah, Ron Burgundy. It look all right. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I'm glad we were able to um, fix problems and simultaneously break problems, but that's fine. We're, we're moving in the right direction. So, um, injectors, they work. I don't know. You might just cancel the injector order. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Save us some money for some other stuff in the long run. So, um, yeah. So, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I am tired. I am worn out. Um, YouTube, you know, everything's edited so it looks like a short day, but no, I've been here for like four hours. I've been working on this car since 2 o'clock at 6.30. Yeah, I am exhausted now. <laughs> so, back is on fire, all that. So, anyways, this is a good, successful video. Also, a lot of people want me to K-Swap and 2J swap this car. I would love to, but I don't have Jimmy Oaks budget. <laughs> I'm not Jimmy Oaks. I'm a regular guy like y'all. So, um, yeah. It could happen, but maybe maybe in the long run. I don't know. We'll see. But for right now, this is what we got. But thanks for watching, guys. Deuces. I'll see you in the next one.